So a fourth frustration with a proposal or a tender can be finding out all the information in advance from the buyer that um, you need to be successful. So sometimes in, in my world, for example, it might be that uh, professional indemnity insurance, which most professionals will have to cover them in, in the very unlikely event that something will go wrong, has to be at a certain level. And uh, knowing that in advance and knowing what that level is obviously means you can tick that box before you go to see somebody. So if you know that's likely to be part of their process, you can ask in advance and make sure they're happy with that before you both spend time in a meeting and, and that meeting doesn't actually go anywhere. So it could be something like professional indemnity insurance. It could also be perhaps you need an ISO 9000, 9001 process. And if your company doesn't have that, they'll have a policy, the buyer, buying team, the purchasing team could have a policy that says, we don't deal with companies that don't have this process. So the sales process, if you understand it properly, you understand what your customer needs, some of those things you need to tick in advance and you need to make sure you have that ISO process in place and agreed before you can go and talk to them because you're not going to be successful if you don't. Another way that a large company can um, get new suppliers in front of them and talk about uh, potentially working together can be something called a competitive pitch. And a competitive pitch is very, very common in some industries. So, for example, in the marketing industry, it really is very, very common for a larger business to say, I want to see three website companies or I want to see three SEO companies or three marketing agencies who can do creative work. And that means it's a little bit like a tender, but not quite so blind. It means that you will prepare some materials in advance, typically go and make a presentation in advance, and the company will, will score you so that they'll be scoring you live and, and asking you questions live, rather than you doing it as a tender process where it's all blind. But the same pitfalls can happen. Because again, if you're preparing something in advance, you're preparing it without really understanding exactly what their needs are. And so there's a little bit of guesswork involved. So that's the first thing. You might be putting something in front of them that isn't exactly what they wanted because you haven't had that opportunity to ask them questions. And secondly, a lot of creatives get quite nervous about this process, particularly if it's more than one step. So a creative agency might be asked to present some ideas um, perhaps some testimonials, some work they've done in the past, like a, a credibility presentation. And then they'll be shortlisted to go to a second meeting and do a further presentation where they might be asked to develop some of those ideas. Now, if you're a creative agency, you get paid for creating good quality content or a good quality brand or logo. And then being asked to develop that idea means you're going through a further stage of working, presumably without getting paid, and there's a fear at the back of your mind always that the company might take some of those ideas, go and work with a different agency, but you've, lot, you've not been paid for it and you've lost all, all contact with that prospective customer. So competitive tendering, uh, competitive pitching can be almost as bad as a tender process in that you're doing all the work up front, 
you're not necessarily getting paid for it, and you can still end up at the end of the day with no sale.